Hello Legacy students, Marsh here. So today we're going to do radical operations. You're going to want your flip chart, perfect roots chart, a calculator, and then you're also going to want a pen or a pencil today. So you want to grab out that flip chart that you've been putting your notes in. Um, we're going to place notes this time in this flap, the radical operations tab. So you're going to want to open up to that tab. So Let's see what we already know. You don't need to write this down. This is more for your knowledge of what you need to know or what you already have done. So the square root of 50, remember guys, you would find the per biggest perfect square in there and that was 25, right? And you said 25 times 2 gave me 50. Well, that square root of 25 was 5, so you got 5 square root of 2 for a final answer as simplified. Then we started to throw in some x's and stuff, and that wasn't too bad. But cube root of 54, we needed to find, we first broke it into two pieces. So cube root of 54 times the cube root of x to the fourth. <clears throat> then we had to figure out what perfect cube goes into 54, which it looks like it would be the cube root of 27 and the cube root of 2. And we know the cube root of 27 is 3. So I can simplify the cube root of 54 to 3 cube roots of 2. Um, and then when we had to deal with the x, the variables, we had to think how many groups of 3 can come out of 4. Well, that will be one group, right? And we have one x that got left behind. Because there was four x's, we took out a group of three, moved it outside, so then it's going to be one left behind. So then I put the people on the outside, because we're multiplying. So I'm going to go 3x and then cube root of 2x would be the simplified version of that. Now, let's formalize our information here. So multiplying and dividing. When you're multiplying or dividing radicals, you need to make sure the index is the same. If it is, we can use only one radical sign. So you're going to want to label down here your examples. One, two, three, four. Make yourself a box or split it in fourths, something like that. So we're going to do example one. So the cube root of four times the cube root of 16. So what we're going to follow is our steps of combine them together. So I'm going to want to multiply and put them under one radical. So I'm going to go 4 times 16, which is 64. So I'm going to now have the cube root of 64. Now I need to figure out a perfect cube that can go into 64. So we're going to take a look at our perfect roots chart here. Oh, look, 64 is a perfect cube. It's 4, right? So notice, guys, even though both of these didn't break down at all, you couldn't simplify them, together, if I combine them, I was able to break it down to just normal 4. So that's why when you're multiplying radicals with like index indices, we can multiply the numbers together. Let's try example 2 now. <coughs> If I have the fourth root of 80 divided by the fourth root of 5, since these have the same index, what I can do is I can make this the fourth root of 80 over 5. I can just take the one, two little radicals and make one big radical. And you can go backwards to that as well. So I'm going to divide 80 by 5, make it a little bit more simpler. So I got the fourth root of 16. Uh, fourth root of 16. Oh, you know what? On my card, it looks like 16 is a perfect fourth. That is 2. So my answer to that problem would be 2. Now, what if those problems have been like this? Cube root of 4 times the fourth root of 16. I could not do anything. This would be done. Done, done, done. Can't do anything, can't deal with them, they can't be combined, any of that. Same thing over here. They don't have the same radicand, or same index, excuse me. 
they don't have the same index, I can't combine them together. So you need to be careful with that regard. Always check your, index, your indices when you're looking at multiplying or dividing. Make sure that they're the same. If they're not, no goes. Gotta just keep them the way they are. Now what about adding and subtracting? Well, when you're adding and subtracting, you have to have like radicals. What do I mean by that? You have to have the same index and you have to have the same radicand. Okay, so a lot more specific on adding and subtracting. Um, and then you can combine the like terms. You can combine the coefficients if you want to consider it that way. The numbers in front. That is what we're going to deal with. So you're going to want to put your two examples of this on these two spots here, the bottom two. So example three, this guy's example three. <coughs> Notice they are the same index, so we can combine these, but they need to also be the same radicand, which in this case, they're not, right? So I'm going to simplify the cube root of 40. I need to find a perfect cube that's in 40. eight goes into 40, right? So cube root of eight times the cube root of five. And I know the cube root of eight is two. So I can simplify this one into two times the cube root of five plus the cube root of five. Notice guys, now I'm at the same radical. They are like radicals. Now my answer would be three, because there's one plus two cube roots of five. The way I like to think of it is, what if cube root of five was just an x? That would be one x plus two x, right? Well, that's just three x's, and x is just the cube root of five. So don't be afraid of the whole cube root of five thing. You just need to have it so that they're the same thing. One cow plus two cows. You just have to have that so the radicals are like. Same index, same radicand. Let's try with subtraction now. So I got the cube root of 54 minus the cube root of 2. Notice, same indices, don't have to worry there, but I do have to have the same radicand. So I'm going to break down 54. Um, 8 doesn't go in there. 27 does, though. So this is the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. And the cube root of 27, look at my perfect roots chart here, is 3. So that is 3 cube roots of 2 minus 1 cube root of 2. Just putting a 1 there so I can see it. Now I'm at like radicals, so now I'm just going to subtract the coefficients, the number in the front. So I'll be 2 cube roots of 2 for my final answer. And that's the end of this video. Uh, we'll go over examples in class before you start your assignment as well, so that way you can have some questions in case you have any. And see you later, Sabres.